Now, a special report from Carol Evan Investigates. I want to ask about all these women you're accused of raping. No! Suspected serial predators left free. Rape kits not tested. It's absolutely outrageous. Investigations botched. Loopholes exposed. It's absolutely time to close the testing loophole. Victims struggle for basic answers. I begged, I cried, I caused a scene. And the public misled. Somebody needs to find out what happened. Carol Evan investigates the untested. Thanks for joining us. I'm AJ Legault. And I'm Brandon Stahl. We've partnered on an investigation that finds, despite promises made years ago, Minnesota is still failing thousands of sexual assault victims. Tonight, you'll see evidence of botched investigations and legal loopholes that let rape kits go untested. But we begin tonight with the story of how actually testing sexual assault kits can solve cases, even identify suspected serial rapists. On the shore of Lake Superior, in Duluth's Park Point, a 19-year-old girl reported being gang raped in 2008. Her rape kit, finally tested a decade later, solved the case. DNA from the sexual assault kit quickly pointed to Dane Mullen, a felon with armed robbery on his rap sheet. In August, he was convicted for aiding and abetting the rape. Obviously, we've had cases that can be solved, that can be charged. John Barrett is Duluth's detective, now tasked with investigating cases tied to the city's 500-plus previously untested rape kits. DNA testing from the beach rape also pointed Detective Barrett to this man, Jesse Lee Fetchner. Excuse me, Jesse? AJ Legault, I'm with Kara Levin. BCA crime lab reports show his sperm cell DNA was found on the victim's clothing. And not just that case. According to criminal charges, his DNA also ties to a 2011 unsolved rape. He's charged with raping a third woman in 2018. In court, Jesse Fetchner has denied the charges, but it's not something he wants to talk about. I want to ask no. about all these women you're accused of raping. No. Fetchner and Mullen are just two of the men to be criminally charged with sexual assault here in Duluth. All because after years of delay, DNA testing was finally done on previously unchecked rape kits. Testing the kits is really important and I think using them to make these connections um, is, is key. Mary Faulkner is coordinating the testing of Duluth's sex assault kits. I think we had to be honest about it and we had to kind of be humble um, and say we broke a trust with some of our community members by not testing their kits. So far, 13 people have been charged. Five have already pled guilty or been convicted. What's more, Three of the suspects, including Fetchner, have been charged with multiple rapes or sexual assaults. And you could say, yes, we've had some serial rapists. Cases like Jesse Fetchner's have changed the way Duluth now investigates sexual assault. We test everything. If the victim consents, all kits get tested. It raises the question, is the rest of Minnesota missing serial rapists due to untested sex assault kits? There's no way to know. Duluth is the only community in the state to complete testing on their old rape kits. There is no reason to not submit a kit. State Representative Marion O'Neill is outspoken in her belief that as long as the victim consents, all of Minnesota's rape kits should be tested. Absolutely. But so far, that's not happened. Back in 2015, a statewide audit identified nearly 3,500 untested rape kits, but they're not all being checked. The legislature never mandated or funded testing. The BCA tells CARE 11, at last count, they have only received 723 of those kits to DNA test. What's the problem with untested rape kits? Serial rapists are left in our society to rape again. That's the problem. In addition to the new prosecutions in Duluth, she points to other cities around the country that have tested their backlog of rape kits and found suspected serial predators. Ohio found 300, Detroit 800. But Carol Levin discovered not only has Minnesota failed to fully test old kits, authorities have even failed to accurately count them. I'm, I'm stunned. That's former Senator Vicki Jensen, the lead author of the 2015 state law that required a full accounting of untested rape kits. Damn. She's reacting 
to Kara Levin's finding that the Minnesota BCA may have missed more than a thousand kits. I felt like we were not taken seriously. Remember, the BCA said it counted nearly 3,500 untested kits, but Kara Levin's investigation uncovered records showing the BCA failed to include other kits they called partially tested for serology, the presence of bodily fluids, but never fully tested for DNA. Should partially tested kits have been counted and disclosed to the public? Absolutely. They had to be. We wanted them on the report so that they could tell us why. So if a kit had not been tested for DNA, it was supposed to be counted? Absolutely. The BCA disagrees, saying in an email, the 2015 count of unsubmitted, untested kits and our review of tested kits are two completely different things. But just look at the 2015 law. It says the definition of an untested kit included any kit that has been submitted to the Bureau for DNA analysis, but the analysis has not been completed. I don't believe the letter of the law was followed. Former House Majority Leader Aaron Murphy was one of the co-sponsors of the 2015 law. She doesn't buy the BCA's explanation that partial testing should count as full DNA testing. I think for the public, and especially for victims, seems like splitting hairs. Somebody needs to find out what happened. And just weeks ago in Minneapolis, there was a stunning announcement about an even bigger mistake. We bring forward the findings today with humility and in the name of transparency. The mayor and police chief disclosing that when it comes to the number of untested rape kits sitting on evidence shelves, the public has been misled. We had a failure in terms of the auditing process of those kits that is unacceptable. Back in 2015, Minneapolis reported it only had 194 untested kits. We now know that was a gross undercount. Right now, what I'm reporting today is that number is around 1,700. It's a pretty blatant lack of respect shown to not actually go and inventory all of the kits. Abby um, Honnold is a sexual assault survivor, now an advocate. She called it a punch to the gut to learn Minneapolis had roughly eight times as many untested rape kits as previously disclosed. Because again, every single one of those kits represents an actual human being, an actual human victim who experienced something horrible. The natural question is how and why was such a mistake made? And very honestly, I stand before you to say we still don't know to this day. But moving forward, what I can assure you is that will never happen again. Minnesota received a federal grant to test some old kits, but that still doesn't cover the cost of testing all of them. Coming up, our investigation finds a loophole in the law allowing even new rape kits to not be tested. And it's outrageous. When the untested continues. Welcome back. For rape survivors, delays in receiving a sexual assault exam can have dire effects. That's exactly what's happening to some victims in Minnesota, and it can mean rapists go free. I feel like my rape kit was completely mishandled. Amber Rossett doubts she'll ever see justice because of multiple misturns in her sexual assault case. There were many steps that the hospital could have taken and that law enforcement could have taken uh, that they didn't take. Jane Manning is a former sex crimes prosecutor. She reviewed Rossett's case files and calls what she sees a case of professional malpractice. That potentially could have made the difference in the outcome of Ms. Rossett's case. Amber says a co-worker came to her house and they were watching a movie. She had just one drink of whiskey from this glass. She went to the bathroom, came back, and had a few more sips. It's like things cut out. And I was so confused. Why was I naked? What just happened? By the time things started to come back into focus, he was throwing on his shirt, telling me very emphatically that we had a really, really good time. Thinking she'd been drugged and raped, Amber went to the Owatonna Hospital last year to get a sexual assault exam. There was no one in the entire hospital who could do a rape kit. No one? No one. They told me that they had to wait for this specific nurse. Her records show the hospital twice paged a specially trained sexual assault nurse examiner known as a SANE. But Amber 
was forced to spend the night in a hospital bed alone, waiting for more than five and a half hours to be examined. It was absolutely too long. Experts say delays like that can mean a loss of crucial evidence, especially if a rape victim has been drugged, resulting in flawed investigations where rapists go free. In too many cases, victims report to the hospital and are kept waiting for hours while precious evidence literally is metabolized away. In Amber's case, BCA lab testing of her urine did not find evidence she'd been drugged. But because of delays, experts say some drugs used to sedate victims could have long been out of her system. Every minute that goes by makes it less likely that uh, um, testing will be able to detect what that drug was. In part because no drugs were found and the suspect claimed the sex was consensual, the prosecutor declined to charge Amber's case. They were done with it over. Goodbye, go on with your life. We found delays in seeing a sexual assault nurse or the inability to see a sane at all routinely happens in Minnesota. Sanes play a crucial role, not just in providing compassionate care, but also in collecting evidence critical to successfully prosecuting sex assault cases. Nearly all metro area hospitals have Sanes on staff and on call, but in greater Minnesota, they're few and far between. In your part of Minnesota, are there enough SANE trained nurses? Absolutely not. Caroline Larson is a sexual assault advocate in northern Minnesota. We figured out that we have less than 10 trained SANE nurses in our service area. Just look, that's for this huge six county swath of the state. And it's not just that area. Advocates tell us in these five counties in southwestern Minnesota, there are only two SANE trained nurses. Statewide, Minnesota has 141 hospitals, but get this, only these, just one in four of them have a sexual assault nurse examiner program. They should absolutely have a trained nurse. Erin Murphy is Minnesota's former House Majority Leader. She's also a registered nurse and says the state can do better. We should make sure that we have enough sane nurses in the state of Minnesota to be able to get to a victim. It could have been handled so much better. Delay? So much better turned to dead end for Amber Rossett. Remember, we told you there were lots of wrong turns in her case. Her blood was never tested for drugs. Her whiskey glass was never tested for drugs. And even worse, turns out her rape kit was never tested for DNA. Why? Records show DNA profiling was not completed at the BCA because the Steele County Sheriff's Office said testing was no longer needed. It's absolutely time to close the testing loophole here in Minnesota. GOP State Representative Marion O'Neill says the loophole lets some rape kits go untested, especially in cases where the suspect is already known and the issue is whether the victim consented. Guidelines from the federally funded Sexual Assault Kit Initiative state, rape kits where the suspect is not a stranger still should be processed for DNA and entered into CODIS, a database meant to catch serial offenders. Without that, law enforcement may not know if the same person has been a suspect in other consent cases in different communities. One consent case could be a misunderstanding. Multiple consent cases could be a serial rapist. I was never told. Amber did not even know her kit wasn't was tested told. until Carol told. Evan asked her to get the records her. in her case. I was told that there was not enough evidence to prosecute the case, not knowing at the time that all the evidence had not been fully processed. And it's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. Still ahead, rape survivors struggle to get answers about their case. I begged, I cried, I caused a scene. When the untested continues. In the wake of our nation's untested rape kit scandal, there's been a movement to empower victims, to give them more answers about whether their rape kit has been tested and just what it found. But our investigation discovered in Minnesota, getting those answers can be easier said than done. There's no straight answers with anything. Tiffany Bowe is on a journey for answers. It's frustrating and I've cried over it. This drive has been four and a half years in the making. She's after records she believes will prove she was sexually assaulted. DNA results from her rape kit and other evidence collected. I need that like solid 
you're telling the truth. This is the room that's curled up facing the wall. Tiffany says she was raped in her home during a 2015 New Year's Eve party. I remember the ball dropping. I took a shot with everybody who was there and that was a really big mistake. Feeling like she'd had too much to drink, she went to bed. And then the next thing I remember is him over me. Half thinking it was a dream, she says she tried to get up. And I felt the bed was wet. And then it just kind of started coming back to me. So I just started screaming. After wrestling with the decision for four days, she reported being raped and went to the St. Cloud Hospital to get a sexual assault exam. Police reports show they collected her bed sheets, talked to other people at the party who gave varying accounts of what happened. They spoke with the suspect and he denies either touching or having any sexual contact with Tiffany. Case closed. Follow-up investigation needed? None. I begged, I cried, I caused a scene. I was that crazy girl in the police station telling them just test the DNA. But that evidence was not sent to the BCA crime lab. No DNA testing was done. Four years, over four years. Just sat there in a locker. She told her story last year to the Star Tribune as part of a series about incomplete rape investigations. Then she got a call. Police were reopening her case. The BCA would finally be sent her kit and that bedsheet evidence for testing. But this summer, when she asked for records of the results, she got the runaround. Now it's just been a back and forth thing with trying to get information and figure out where it's at. Idaho has developed a tracking system that allows sexual assault survivors to go online and find out if and when their kit has been tested and who has it. Matthew Gamet, Idaho's Forensic Services Director, says victims can also request notification if a DNA match occurs. It is a solution that works here in Idaho and can be replicated all across the country. Gamut says 25 states, including Wisconsin, have already inquired about the software and they give it out free to any state that asks. We will provide any assistance that we can. But Minnesota has never asked. Jude Foster is with the Minnesota Coalition Against Sexual Assault. Currently, we do not have a statewide tracking system. Um, which is problematic. In 2018, the Minnesota legislature did pass the Victim Rights to Sexual Assault Evidence Information Law. It required police to put in policies and procedures to get victims information about their sexual assault kits no later than January 1st, 2019. But when Kara Levin began surveying law enforcement across the state, we found a number of police agencies that couldn't give us those specific procedures to give victims access to information from their rape kits. Yeah. Tiffany was eventually told to get the record she wanted. She needed to drive 40 minutes away to sign a release form in person at the Sherburne County Attorney's Office. Do you have an appointment? She was directed through security to the prosecutor's office. And the form she was supposed to sign? This is the form. A blank piece of paper. She was never even asked for her ID and would Driving still leave forever. with nothing and then not getting anything. Not even sure if I'm gonna get anything. A month and a half of waiting later, Tiffany did get her records. BCA lab testing found her rape kit had insufficient evidence. Remember, she waited four days to get it done. But the records do contain a bombshell. DNA testing on her bed sheets was a match for the suspect's semen. This seems to directly contradict his story of no sexual contact. Despite this evidence, there's no record the police went back to re-interview the suspect. And Tiffany got the news her case had been closed again. She the recorded a phone call with Assistant County Attorney Lee Emmons. I'm not telling you that I don't believe that it happened. I'm telling you I don't believe I can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Tiffany told her story hoping it would spur Minnesota to get a proper notification system to help other survivors get answers. Still ahead. It's absolutely time to close the testing loophole here in Minnesota. The untested continues after the break. For months, we've exposed how rape kits are going untested, leaving victims without justice. Now there are plans to make sweeping changes to the law and mandate all rape kits be DNA tested. 
as 2019 draws to a close at the state capitol. There's a lot yet to do. Representative Marion O'Neill is marking up bills, setting out to reform how Minnesota handles rape cases. We have cases of rape where the rape kit isn't tested and no one does a decent investigation, not even a scant investigation. O'Neill wants to mandate that as long as the victim consents, all rape kits get DNA tested. I'm a pretty resilient person. No more cases like Amber Rossett's, which hinged on whether there was consent. I was basically made out to be a drunken slut. Despite federal guidelines that DNA in these types of cases still be tested, law enforcement told the BCA not to bother DNA testing her rape kit. It's absolutely time to close the testing loophole here in Minnesota. I the proposed new law will also like call for the BCA to provide centralized storage of all rape kits to avoid situations like Minneapolis. We still don't know to this day. Where they lost track of more than 1,500 untested kits. And remember Tiffany Bow. This is the form. Who just wanted answers about her case? O'Neill's legislation would create a statewide online database so victims can easily track what's happening with their rape kit, pointing to the serial rape suspects found in Ohio and Detroit and Duluth. I want to ask no. about all these women you're accused of raping. No. Representative O'Neill says the stakes are too high to do nothing. I can guarantee you that there are serial rapists going undetected in Minnesota. That reform legislation will be officially introduced in February. Meanwhile, victims of sexual assault who need help can head to rapehelpmn.org to find an advocate. On behalf of our entire team here at CARE 11 Investigates, thanks for watching The Untested.